All right. Okay, there we go. All right, well, um, thank you so much for having me. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Perfect, I'll make sure it's working. Mm -hmm. Yep. And all right. Okay, wonderful. I'm gonna mute myself now. Thanks, Monica. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, it's like this horrible, yucky day outside. So I know that uh, you're not missing out on any lovely weather. So um, my name is Monica. I work at the uh, Skokie Public Library. I'm the administrative assistant to the director there. Um, part of I'm part of the green team and just have a general interest in trying to be greener in my life. And so um, Several months ago now, the library had asked me to put together a program for our library on zero waste and you know green practices. And um, so I did it for our library and it sort of became a hit. And um, I started going doing the library circuit. And uh, and then since the pandemic started now, the virtual library circuit. So I'm sad not to be able to go visit the library because I've really enjoyed seeing the different libraries all over um, the Chicagoland area. But um, but maybe I'll come back sometime and be able to do it in person. So. Um, so I'm going to be, it's going to be a combination of um, sharing my screen and then doing a little bit of show and tell of the different items that I use in my house. Um, if you've got questions throughout, you can, you're welcome to pop them in the chat and I'll try to um, address them as I go through. Or if not, you can always wait till the end um, and we can have a discussion afterwards. I always love hearing people's suggestions, hearing what people are doing in their own homes. Um, I'm not from Sycamore, so I don't know, you know, some of the things um, that you might have access to there. So, um, so I'm always happy to hear of like specific programs and things that, that you have. So, all right, so we will get started here. So first, starting out with some facts about trash. So um, as of the last study by the EPA, which is in 2017, um, people in the United States were generating about four and a half pounds of waste per person per day for a total of about 267.8 million tons. 52% um, of that garbage is being landfilled um, and food is the largest component, which is about 22% and plastics account for about 19%. So um, we'll talk about those, those two things specifically, but, um, but this is, you know, this image here, this is a landfill. This is where your trash just gets dumped um, into giant horrible piles. And I'm gonna, I don't know if um, Sam, if you're gonna do the admitting people who come in the waiting room, but I will. Yes, I'll let yep, you I will continue okay. to check for people. Right. Thank you. Yep. So um, the good news is that despite this generation of waste increasing from 88 million tons in 1960 to 267.8 million tons in 2017, this rate of four and a half pounds of waste per person per day is one of the lowest rates since 1990. So we're, we're doing better. And again, this is just in the United States. Over time, uh, recycling rates have increased from just about 6% of all of the waste generated in 1960 to over 35% in 2017 when the study was done. Um, and obviously that means the disposal of waste to landfills has decreased in that time too. So um, we're doing okay, a little bit better. Uh, however, I'm just gonna show you this little depressing video there's no, there's just like music in the background. Sometimes it doesn't share the audio, but it doesn't matter because it's just music. There's nothing.
So pretty sad there. Um, that was in the ocean floor in Taiwan. So more bad news, 65% um, of our garbage is not being recycled. Um, and many times when we think that our items are being recycled, it turns out they're actually being landfilled or burned or stockpiled. So um, a lot of times we do something called wish cycling where we you know, toss something in the recycling bin and we're like, yay, I recycled. But what you don't realize is that if you didn't rinse it or it was a tiny little plastic top or it was a little soda pop tab or um, you know, it was a plastic bag or something that your town doesn't take, that stuff is all just getting thrown in the garbage. So um, we need, to, this is why when, you know, I go through my presentation and we talk a little more, recycling is not the focus. We need to do things before we get to that step to ensure that we're not creating that waste in the first place because recycling is not a fail-proof um, system. Um, also, China used to be the largest buyer of U.S. plastic waste, but now only about half of the plastic waste that the U.S. once exported is still being accepted by foreign markets. Um, the equivalent of 19,000 shipping containers of plastic recycling per month is now stranded in the U.S., which is enough to fill 250 Olympic-sized swimming pools each month. Um, so uh, that's part of this thing, this, this problem too. This was back in 2018 when China decided they weren't going to buy our plastic anymore. Um, and so before we had, because they were buying it, there was a market for it. Um, there was so much money to be able to put into the recycling processes. So the people that were working at the recycling plants, they could take the time to sort out the things that were contaminating. That's what they call it when you put something not recyclable in the recycling um, so any of this contaminated recycling, they would just take out the things that were the contamination and would recycle the rest. But now there's no money for that because China's not buying this. And so um, they're just throwing it away. So, um, you know, something to keep in mind. And then because China wasn't buying it, we were trying to find other third world countries to send our plastic to. <clears throat> Malaysia recently sent back 150 shipping containers of plastic waste. So they send it back to countries, including the US, the UK, France, and Canada, saying we're not going to be the garbage dump of the world. During the first seven months of 2018, plastic waste exported from the U.S. to Malaysia more than doubled compared with the previous year. <clears throat> and most plastics were actually never possible to recycle at all. Um, in fact, one study found that only 9% of the plastic ever produced has been recycled. Um, and as we know, the production of plastic is growing exponentially. So, um, you know, this is, this is a scary thing. Um, and there are now more than 5 trillion pieces of microplastic in the oceans, more than there are fish. So microplastics are when all of these plastics break down um, because of, you know, the sun and the water and the air. And it's, they, they turn into tinier and tinier pieces that are everywhere. They're in our clothing, they're in the air we breathe, they're in the food we eat. Um, so in the ocean now, there's more microplastic than fish. And there's no force on earth that's going to be able to clean that up. So the best we can do is try to keep more from going in. So that's where we come in here. So there are five concepts of zero waste. Um, you are probably familiar with the middle three, reduce, reuse, recycle, um, but we have two others to add on there, refuse and rot. So I will go through each of these. Um, <clears throat> refuse is knowing how to say no to things that are not essential. Um, stop accepting freebies, those kinds of things. We'll talk about that. Uh, reduce, trying to just adopt minimalist tendencies and not stockpile things. Uh, reuse, giving items a second life instead of just throwing them out and buying new ones. Uh, recycle, prioritizing things that come in recyclable packaging. And then rot, which is composting organic waste. So what do we get out of it? Um, so, you know, we can all say that, oh, we're just here because we want to save the earth. Um, and that's great, but we are humans and humans technically, you know, generally do things uh, that are going to benefit them as, as, you know, individuals, right? We're selfish creatures. So, um, so there's also some of our own personal benefit that you can get out of trying to reduce your waste. Um, one is better health. A lot of plastics have things that uh, leach harmful substances um, like BPAs and phthalates. I'm sure you've seen containers that say BPA free. There are these chemicals that are in, especially like in cheaply made plastics um, that are suspected causes of cancer, early puberty in girls, infertility in males, hyperactivity and neurological condi conditions, and they are linked to obesity and type two diabetes. Um, so if you drop the plastic, you re reduce your risk of all those uh, the things from those chemicals. 
when you switch to, for example, using natural beauty products um, that tend to be, you know, packaged in, you know, either like paper or more uh, green um, kinds of packaging, or you're making your own things or that kind of thing. Um, obviously, those things have less chemicals in them. So um, that's, that's going to be better for your health. Um, you, when you replace processed and junk food that are things like you know, packaged chips or frozen meals that come in a plastic tray with a cellophane top and in a, in a cardboard box with plastic wrapped around that, right? Um, those foods are not as good for you as, you know, just buying regular fruits and vegetables in the store. That's much more nutritious. Um, so at the same time that you're dropping the packaged stuff, you're also just making healthier food choices. Um, if you drink water as opposed to buying soda or juice or things like that that come in plastic bottles or cans, obviously water is better for you. So, and then you save money because you consume less in general. You buy only what you need to replace and not add more things to your inventory. Um, processed food is more expensive than preparing the same thing from scratch. So there's a win there. Um, it's about quality over quantity. So it might be more expensive at first to buy a quality reusable item, but it pays off in the long run because that you have that thing that is reusable as opposed to disposable. Um, so that all helps save money. And then in general, just having less stuff means more money because it's costly for us to store and maintain and repair all of the things that we do have. So trying to reduce that will just help you in general. So the first uh, R is refuse. So um, it's about just saying no, right? Um, not the way that it was used before in the 80s, but now talking about plastics and single use items. So um, everybody has in this little corner picture, everybody has a cabinet full of this kind of junk, right? So all of these like, you know, cups and water bottles and like calculators and swag, right? That we get at, you know, you go to some kind of event and there's always a bank handing out a beer koozie or whatever it is, right? And it's hard to say no, because it's free. And so it's tempting. And so we take them, but then you end up with all this like cheaply made plastic stuff that you don't need. So learning how to think twice and just say, no, you know what, thanks, I don't need that, and, you know, keep on moving. Um, and it's not about replacing plastics with greener alternatives. So there was a whole big thing about saying, um, switching over to paper straws instead of plastic straws, right? But paper straws, you had to cut down the trees to make the paper, so it's not anything better than, than the plastic. So we just need to say no straw um, and, and leave it at that. Um, sometimes, Companies try to use, like restaurants will try to use compostable bowls and silverware and stuff. And that's great if they're actually composting them. If they're just tossing them in the garbage, then there's no difference between that and throwing something that's plastic in the garbage. And I'll talk a little bit later about, um, you know, why that's not going to break down in your, in your garbage like you think it is. Um, so, you know, things like hotel toiletries, party favors. I've got two kids and, you know, there's this pressure to have the goodie bag, right? Nobody wants that crap in their house, right? So, you know, that's that's something that you can feel like you can do away with um, and just lose all the little plastic tchotchkes. No one's going to be sad about it. Come up with some other kind of alternative. Um, and, you know, it can be tempting to want to take all of these little freebies, but we have to remember that they're usually poor quality. They're produced at low cost, which means they probably have those harmful BPAs and things like that. Um, and they were probably manufa manufactured at the cost of workers, um, meaning, you know, that they are, uh, they're, the labor practices in the places where these things are being made are not great. Um, and then obviously have a harmful environmental footprint. So um, some other things that you can say no to. Oh, and by the way, there's um, a handout that has a lot of links and articles and um, a lot of links to the products that I'll mention later on. And Sam's going to email that out to all of you later on. So don't feel like you need to rush and write stuff down. Um, you'll have it. Uh, shortly. So um, so another thing that you can do to say no to is um, to get off of catalog mailing lists, for example, so junk mail. So there's a website um, that I share that's called catalogchoice.org, where uh, with just putting in your information, your address, you can un unsubscribe yourself from many, many, many mailing lists at one time, as opposed to having to contact each company each time you get a catalog and say, take me off your list, right? Um, there's a way to unsubscribe from the Valpac coupons, you know, that blue envelope of like Jiffy Lube and HVAC coupons that you get that you just put from your mailbox into your recycling bin directly. You can get off of that mailing list, um, just like you can get off of, you know, Yellow Pages mailing list. You just can go to the Valpac website and get off of that and it works. Um, so that's really great. 
there's a link to opt out of credit card and insurance offers. So, you know, those envelopes that you get that are like, hey, sign up for 0% APR, right? You can get off of those mailing lists. Um, so there's some options for that. And then in this little cartoon on the side here, you've got Lord Wolfington who um, brings his own cutlery to the, to the restaurant um, so that he can do away with of choosing the plastic stuff. This is a hard one right now because as we know in pandemic times, it's um, we're ordering out and things like that. And you, even if you mark the box, you know, that you don't want any plastic wear because duh, we're at our house. So it means we probably have plates and forks and all those kinds of things. They still insist on throwing them in there. So um, it's really hard. And I think unless you call directly to the restaurant and tell them, but it's such an automatic thing, you know, even in this time when clearly we're all at our houses, um, they still send that. So, um, you know, that's like, that's just one of those things that we have to just keep working at, but it's good to keep it in mind. And now as things are opening up, you know, take your little reusable cutlery with you to work and take it to the restaurant when you order out. So then we'll go to reduce and I will explain the ice cream cone here. Um, so <clears throat> reduce is about choosing quality over quantity um, in the things that we do have. Uh, so using buying things that are repairable versus disposable. And um, there's a website that I share on my handout that's called um, buymeonce.com where it sort of rates products um, by quality. So you can kind of see, okay, what, what is the best quality of this kind of thing that I'm looking for? Um, so that's really a useful thing. Um, and, you know, some of these companies are really great. Like there's, you know, for example, Patagonia, like they, they stand by their products so much that, you know, if something breaks or whatever, they'll repair it for you. Um, they'll take care of it. So even though you're spending a lot at the outset, it's something that's going to last you decades and decades, as opposed to buying like the cheap Costco coat that only lasts a season and then you got to buy another one, right? Um, so it's about avoiding unnecessary purchases. Um, it's gifting experiences versus things. So again, pre-pandemic, this was easier, but um, for gifts, for example, I like to give, you know, a museum membership or something like that, or, you know, a restaurant gift certificate or something where people can go out and enjoy themselves um, as opposed to adding something else to all the stuff that they have in their house. Um, another way to avoid unnecessary purchases is to practice waiting. Uh, it's really hard now because everything's online and with one click, you can have something ordered in, in your house in an hour, right? So um, it's very hard, but a lot of times because it's so it's so tempting to do that and we end up purchasing a lot of things that we don't need. So um, practice waiting, like just think to yourself, okay, sit on it for a week. If there's this one thing that you think that you want in that moment, sit on it for a week. And if a week later you still need it, okay, you know, go ahead and purchase it, but look for some local options or look for, um, can you buy it used, that kind of thing. And, you know, maybe the week later you sit there and you're like, oh, I don't really need that thing. I'm glad I didn't buy it because it would have just been one more thing right in my house. So um, it's about collaborative consumption, which means borrowing and sharing and libraries and bartering. Um, so, you know, a lot of times there's something that you need for a short period of time, but you don't necessarily need to purchase it, right? Like a book that you can borrow from the library. Um, but also things like we were going to go camping and I'd never gone camping with my family before. What if they hated it? I wasn't going to, you know, just splurge on a $200 tent. I asked around my social media and my Facebook friends and does anybody have a tent we can borrow? Half your friends have a tent you can borrow. So you can just use that, see if you like it and then, you know, go from there. And so when they need something, you know, oh, can we borrow your lawnmower or whatever it is? Um, you're, you're free to do that. And it's just a way to kind of share what we have as opposed to everybody having to buy their own, right? So I'm um, actually with my neighbor, we share my lawnmower. So I have a, a um, plug-in lawnmower and he has a garage and I don't. So he keeps, keeps it in his garage and then he can use it. And then I just go and grab it and use it when I need to use it. And it's a it's a win-win, so. Um, it's about rethinking. So considering using items that you already have on hand for different purposes. So just because the use that that thing was intended for is done, like maybe there's something else that you can do with it. And it's just about um, being in innovative and inventive and creative about it. Um, I always think about, I, I studied abroad in Cuba and, you know, every, all these images of Cuba that you see are these cars from the 1950s still running on the streets. And you're like, how is this happening that there was this embargo and they weren't able to get parts you know for those cars how are they still running and 
they just were creative about what they had and they were able to, you know, use their own materials and things to make the parts and repair the cars and be able to keep them going because they didn't have a choice, right? So that's sort of um, uh, just innovative thinking is what we all need to do in our lives. And I always think that that's a, that's a great example. Um, and then if you're going out for ice cream, ask for a cone instead of a cup because then there's no waste. So uh, it does include more calories, but that's a different topic. So now we're gonna talk about reusing. So I'm going to um, stop my share for a minute so I can show you the things that I have here. Hopefully you guys can see me. I'm gonna spotlight myself. So, okay. So I'm gonna show you some of the reusable items that I use. Um, a lot of these might be things that you have and some things might be new. Um, first, everybody has cloth grocery bags. This is my little shout out to Skokie Public Library. Um, so everyone has these cloth grocery bags, right? That was like one of the first things that people did when they're looking at reusables. Um, it's been hard again with the pandemic because some stores for a while were not taking them because they thought that you could spread COVID through your own bags. So what, I've, um, what you can do is when you go to the store, uh, just don't bag your items, just keep them in the cart, take them out to your car and then bag them when you get to your car in your own bag. So that's kind of a way around that if, you, if your stores aren't taking those bags. Um, but those are a really simple thing. If you don't have a usable bag, where have you been for the last like decade? Uh, everybody has them now. What I like to do is I, um, after I put my groceries away, I hang them on the doorknob. So I remember to grab them and put them back in my car the next time I go out. No excuses, you have them there. Um, another really cool thing is I have these cloth produce bags. So the little, you know, plastic bags that you put, you know, your loose apples and things like in the grocery store. Um, these are a mesh version of that, washable. They have a little tie, they don't weigh anything. Um, so these are really great alternative that I used to take with me when I would go to the grocery store in person. Um, so these are an, a great option. Again, there's links to all this on the handout if you're looking for these things, but they're pretty easy to find. Actually in my grocery store now, they have them in the checkout aisle. So pretty cool. So these are kind of a new cool thing. Um, one other thing I use is uh, washable sponges. So many iterations of that, but sponges, you know, get really disgusting and they smell and then we throw them out and we open a new package, right? So it's pretty wasteful. These ones um, are all different kinds of washable sponges. So you can throw them in your dishwasher, you can throw them in your washing machine. Um, they last a long time. This one, um, let's see, I'll go with like least favorite to most favorite. These are like a scrubby kind of scouring one um, that is washable. The only thing I don't like about them is they're made from plastic, some kind of plastic. So that's not great, but they uh, were packaged in the US by with recycled paper and packed by people with disabilities. So ethically well-made. Um, and they, they, you can tell that these are gonna last you a long time because they're just feel sturdy and strong, but they're not absorbent like a sponge. It's just like a scrubby thing. Then we have these, this is called like a Swedish dishcloth or something. It looks kind of hard, but when it's wet, it's very soft and um, pliable. And again, just washing your washing machine. This is great for like wiping up spills and all those kinds of things, very absorbent. I like these. Um, and then the third iteration that I have is a, this one is a company called ET um, and it has a, uh, a um, what's it called, absorbent side and then a sponge, like an actual like sponge from the ocean side, like a loofah. Um, and so it's fully compostable. So when it does run out, cause you know, they actually eventually do wear out but these actually last a really long time. I bought three of them when I, when I got them and I'm still on the first one. Um, but these are great cause you can just compost them directly. So, and uh, see Sam loves her Swedish disc claws. Yeah, they're great. They, they just pick up everything. They're just really easy to clean with. I like them. So these are, these are great too. But for just like washing dishes, I like this kind of thing. So washable sponges, very cool. Then we've got, um, oh, one of the first things that I did when I started making the change to reusable things was to start using cloth napkins. Um, a friend of mine was doing it. And I think we all think of cloth napkins as like fancy, uh, but they're not, they don't have to be. This is, uh, my friend made this out of like some, you know, just cloth and she just put a little, sewed a little hem on it and voila, done, crate and barrel style. And um, they're really great. I don't iron them or anything. You can use them if it's just you and your family at home, you know, use them a couple of times before you throw them in the wash. Um, I have a whole bunch of them, different colors. You can make it as fun as you want. When they, you know, get stained, you can recycle them or 
make them turn into rags. Um, but yeah, this is just a really easy thing. Nobody should be using paper napkins because this is really easy to, to make the switch to. Um, there's cloth handkerchiefs. They exist. It's an option. I don't use them, but you know, people can. People used to, right? But that's uh, to each their own on that one. Um, reusable water bottles, coffee cups. I don't have an example of that because I'm sure you all have these, um, but it's a good thing, a good reminder. Again, I think for a while, Starbucks wasn't letting you, for example, use your own cup when you went. Some places are starting to let you do that now, but there's uh, Starbucks usually used to give you a discount if you have your own mug. It's like 10 cents, it's not very much, but it's something. So that's kind of an incentive. And I had sort of made it an incentive to myself that if I wanted to go out for coffee, if I didn't have my reusable mug in my car, then I punished myself and I wouldn't get the coffee. So that was a really good way for me to remember to always bring my mug with me. Um, and then um, reusable containers for takeout or leftovers. Like when, when we go to restaurants again, um, you know, bring a Tupperware, who cares? Like you're gonna get, if you're gonna take leftovers home, like just put it in your own thing as opposed to getting like all of that styrofoam or cheap plastic stuff. Um, that's totally fine for you to do. Some restaurants, are, they're not gonna, put the food directly into your container because there's food safety rules and things like that. But um, but you are welcome to do that yourself and take it home that way. Um, also, some people uh, take used to uh, take their own containers to even like the deli counter at the grocery store um, and say, you know, they'd weigh it on their thing, then put it in your container and give you the little sticker and you're good to go. So again, each store is different on whether they're going to let you do that. But um, but I've heard many successful stories of people doing that. So. Um, reusable uh, personal beauty items. So there's lots of cool things. Um, these are little uh, like cotton pads, like to make uh, do makeup removal, that kind of thing. Um, I got these on Etsy, which is a website of people who like make a lot of stuff, like little local small businesses. So it's really nice to support somebody doing just doing their thing. But these are really cute, and they come in all kinds of different patterns and they're washable. So you're not just using them one time and tossing them out and they are just as good as, as those cotton ones. So I also have these cool thing. There's this company called The Last Swab and they came up with a reusable um, Q-tip or cotton swab, right? So very cool. This opens up like this and then you have your own little Q-tip inside. And it's like got a little rubbery silicone top. This is like a makeup one. So it has a pointy end too, but there's one that's just two sides like this. Um, and you just use it and then wash it with soap and water. And there you go. And they come in all different colors. So everyone in your family can have their own and you're not gonna worry about sticking somebody else's Q-tip in your ear. And they're not supposed to stick them in your ears, but everybody does it. So, so this is very cool. This was a Kickstarter, uh, which is, a thing where a company has an idea to make something, but they don't have the cash to do it. So you sort of like invest in them um, and pledge money. And if they hit the, the amount that they're wanting to, to get, then you get the item that you um, invested in. So, uh, so these are really cool. And they have a lot of products now too. They have, now they're called like the last object and they have other things too. So, um, but that's, that's another great one. So there's, you know, many, many kinds of these you know, personal beauty items and things that are reusable. Um, there's feminine products too. Lots of people do that kind of thing. Um, so it's just a matter of looking out there, but those are some of the things I use. And then if you're worried about water, cause you're saying, well, I'm gonna use all these reusable things and then I have to wash them in the dishwasher or the washing machine. Uh, it takes eight gallons of water to make one paper plate uh, and an energy efficient dishwasher uses three to five gallons of water for an entire load of dishes. So the water excuse is not valid. Um, it's way more wasteful to make paper products than it is to wash reusable products that you have in your house, especially because most of us, you know, most of us use it, have efficient uh, appliances now. So, um, and then we can return things. So uh, for example, if you um, go to the dry cleaners, like when we needed to wear fancy clothes and people did that, um, you could return your hangers there. Uh, you can return containers to the farmer's market. Um, so, you know, if you bought little berries or whatever, the farmer's always happy to take those back, like egg cartons, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, think about doing that. Um, and then uh, clothing, that's another one thing kind of you can reuse. I think a lot of people think about it in terms of kids, right? Hand-me-downs. 
Um, like I share a lot of my kids' clothes with people at work and they send stuff to me, but adults can do it too. Um, you know, all those clothes that you have sitting in your closet that, you know, fit you before the COVID-19, right? Uh, you can take those to your friend's house and have a little shop within everybody's, you know, clothes. Everybody brings stuff that they don't want anymore and you get things that are new to you, but you haven't had, you haven't gone and bought new additional items, right? So, um, so that's another great way to kind of reuse stuff and share. So, all right, let's see here. So then we get to recycling. So as I mentioned before, um, this is, you know, the third R in our list of R's or fourth R, whatever it is. So that, you know, you're trying to do all these other things before you get to this point, because recycling is not gonna solve our problem. Um, but there are some good recycling programs for different items that um, are kind of cool. Plastic bags, I think people mostly know this by now, but any kind of plastic bags or like cellophane or soft plastic like that, um, you can take to your local big box store. So like, a, you know, a Costco or not a Costco, a Target or a Jewel or, you know, Home Depot or Kohl's. And they have bins at the front of the store where you can bring all of that. And um, what happens is there's a company called Trex that makes composite decking. So um, like decks, you know, like your patio in the backyard, they use all of that plastic to make that material. So it's quite a pretty cool. Um, and so that's a good way to, to get rid of those plastic bags that even as much as you try, you're gonna accumulate some kind of that. Um, contact lenses. So Bosch & Lohm, which is a contact lens company, they have a program to recycle the actual lenses. So if you wear disposable contact lenses, and the little blister packs that they come in, both the foil and the, the little plastic part. Um, and you can actually, you collect it all. So I just throw the whole blister pack. You don't even have to separate the foil from the thing. So just toss those in, toss your lenses in there, collect them over time. And either you can take it to a local eye doctor's office that participates in the program, or you can go onto their website and print out a free shipping label um, and ship it back to them. And they recycle those things, which, you know, when you think about it, like this is, you know, 365 days a year, if you wear contacts and they're daily disposables, that's over 700 contacts um, that you're tossing out every day in tiny little plastics, you know? So, um, so it's pretty cool um, to do that. And then there's a company called TerraCycle that specializes in all kinds of like very specific recycling programs. So there's one for baby food pouches, there's one for Gillette razors or even Swiffer pads. Like you can use a reusable Swiffer like, um, like head, it's kind of like a, I have one, I should have brought it, but it's like a little um, kind of sponge thing that you can wash, that you can attach to the Swiffer and throw it in your washing machine. So that's a good option. But if you like the actual, you know, disposable Swiffer things, because you can just take it out of the box and stick it on and it's easy, good to go. You just let it dry out afterwards and you can send it back and they will recycle it. So it's pretty cool. You can go on their website. Some of these things are um, programs that you need to pay for and some are free or some are the ones that like, uh, different organizations in your community might have a box to collect certain things. So um, you just have to do a little bit of research to see what there is. But um, but it's very cool because they're just like these individual things that otherwise there's nothing, you don't know what to do with toothbrushes, you know, that kind of thing. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, check with your local recycling authority. I don't know uh, what, what is provided in Sycamore, but um, I know that our local um, recycling company for example, we have a textile program in the neighborhood where um, you can put any kinds of cloth, like either old clothes or rags or any kind of cloth that you don't need anymore. And they will just pick it up when they pick up your garbage and your recycling and recycle it for you. So that kind of thing. So there's specialized programs. There's a shoe reuse program. There's recycling for residential electronics, for pharmaceuticals, chemical waste. So just do a little digging to see what's offered in your own community for that. Uh, and then we get to rot. So rot is about um, composting. It's about um, food and and there's so there's a different there's a couple options. I heard um, that uh, Laura was talking about how they're going to bring a vermiculture program. So that has to do with um, that's composting that's done by little worms and that's very cool. But it's obviously a small scale kind of thing. Um, and then you can do backyard composting, um, which uh, you can use your food scraps. It has to be a certain combination of like fruits and vegetables, like green things and brown things like paper and stuff and something else. I don't do this kind of composting clearly, um, but 
the thing is you're limited in, in what you can put in your backyard composting. What I do is I use a company that's called Collective Resource. And I don't know if they get out to Sycamore, but, um, but they've always told me that if people are interested, they should just go on the website and say that they're interested because that's the only way they'll be able to expand their service areas if they know that people would want the service. But um, they are a commercial composting company where they bring me a, like a Home Depot bucket to my house and I have it outside my, my kitchen door and I can put anything that was once alive in there. So I can put bones, I can put dryer lint, I can put um, wax, like paper, anything, um, which is really great. It's just a sort of wider range. Um, dairy products, I mean like moldy cheese, whatever, which you can't necessarily do in your own backyard composting. Um, it's a service that we pay for, but the, the village of Skokie where I live subsidizes it. So I think I pay like $78 for a quarter, a quarter. So for a quarter of a year. Um, and then they come weekly to pick up this bucket. And I really love it. I think it's really cut down on the amount of waste. And I just feel so much better tossing, you know, broccoli stalks in that thing as opposed to just into the garbage, right? So um, and then they do a compost pickup once a year where you can go for free and get a bunch of buckets of compost to, to take home for your own garden. So it's really cool. Um, and then, you know, people might think this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, won't my food scraps just biodegrade in the garbage? Like we were all taught, you know, they would saw, you remember that chart that you saw in, in elementary school where like, oh, a piece of paper will biodegrade in one year and plastic takes 100 years. And this, you know, takes this many readers, like a banana peel, whatever, three weeks. In, in ideal conditions, yes, that happens. But when you are throwing things in landfills, the landfills are just too overcrowded for trash to biodegrade. So there's not much dirt. There's very little oxygen, very few microorganisms. They did a study by the University of Arizona where they uncovered 50-year-old newspapers that you could still read, 25-year-old hot dogs, corn cobs, and grapes. So uh, 25 years later, those grapes still look like grapes. Um, so yeah, uh, the problem with landfills, even if you think like, oh, it's okay, it's just a banana peel, like it'll break down. It's not going to happen. It's They're too overcrowded. Plus, you're throwing it in a plastic bag that doesn't biodegrade and then putting it in your garbage. Um, for a while, I was like, oh, I'm going to buy biodegradable garbage bags. But then I was like, wait, it, they're not going to break down anyway because of this problem. So um, so composting is a way to go if you can do it. And some towns have their own composting programs, like just with their own yard waste and stuff, which is great. So um, thank you, Sam, for sending out the resource guide. You'll have that to, to look at and, and follow up on some of these things that I've been talking about. So some other ideas um, that I can share with you of things that I do, and I'm gonna stop sharing so I can show you a couple more, my other little show and tell here. Um, so there are a lot of products that I try to use that are tree free. So um, their bamboo is really hot right now and it's very sustainable paper-like substance. So um, it's a good alternative. I have, uh, for example, these are bamboo paper towels. Now I'm, ripping, like you can't rip them. They're indestructible. Um, they're washable. They come on a roll, just like a paper towel. Um, this kind that I got is like this. And it's, uh, you just throw in your washing machine again. And it's just like, you know, kind of a reusable cloth. And Costco now has bamboo paper towels that are more like a paper kind. Um, and you can just feel good, better about it because you're not cutting down trees to use that paper. Um, I also use, um, this is, 100% recycled toilet paper. Not, it's not toilet paper that like was recycled. It's toilet paper that made out of recycled paper. Um, and this is a company called Who Gives a Crap, which is from uh, Australia. And they donate 50% of their profits to building toilets all over the world where they're needed. Um, it's 100% recycled and they also have a bamboo option. There's no inks or dyes. It's like three ply. I always tell people, it's, it's not going to be your Charmin, like super soft, but it's not going to be like the stuff you had in your elementary school bathroom, right? It's a little bit in between. It's been fine for us. I really like it. They stand by their product. So if you try it and you don't like it, there's no problem. We'll give you your money back. It comes in the mail. You get like 48 rolls in this giant cardboard box. Um, they're all individually wrapped with just paper. So you can recycle the paper. My kids love it because it comes in all these different colors. And so they like build forts out of it for a week before I get to put it away. So everybody loves it. So I really like this company and they actually are the people that do the Swedish dishcloths that I got too. They're also from them, from who gives a crap. So 
Um, so this is a great tree-free or 100% recycled uh, toilet paper option. There's also um, bamboo toothbrushes now, which uh, they, they look like wood, just like a little wooden handle. The bristles are still nylon, but you can snap the head off and then compost the stick part. So that's kind of cool, less waste than, than a um, regular toothbrush. Um, there is a reusable like food wrap or ways to store your food. These are silicone um, Ziploc bags. So um, they're just like a regular you know, Ziploc, but these are washable and reusable. They can freezer safe and all that kind of stuff. They come in different sizes. Um, so these are a good option to get rid of the, the Ziplocs in your sandwich bags. There's um, beeswax food wrap that I know Sam said she uses. I, have, I haven't used it, but I think it's um, a really good option to get rid of uh, instead of using aluminum foil or plastic wrap. Aluminum is not so bad. If you wash it, you can recycle it. Um, but if you can't wash it and you're just throwing it away, aluminum never breaks down. So that's something that's permanently here. So something to consider. Um, I also use plastic-free detergent. So this is a, a company called Drops. Um, there's many companies out there. This is just the one that I use. It comes like this in a tiny little cardboard box. And the, their little pods, like this, that you just toss into your washing machine um, and they just break down. It looks like they're plastic, but they're not. It's some kind of plant-based thing. They're vegan and <clears throat> have essential oils. And they have ones that are scent-free and ones for sensitive skin. And um, I'm a runner, so I have like really disgusting running clothes and these things do the trick um, and no qualms there. They also have fabric softener pods. So you just toss one of each into your wash um, and then it's taken care of. So you don't need to use the dryer sheets, which are again, wasteful. Um, and they, this company also does dishwasher detergent also in pods. Um, so yeah, this is, there's just better than buying a huge plastic jug um, from Costco. So also it just comes in the mail. So it's like a subscription. It's not anything you pay for. You just pay for the things that you get. It's not like a membership. And you can always skip a subscription or postpone it if you still have some. It's very easy to do. So I like them. And then I use um, these in my dryer too. These are wool dryer balls that are like this. And they just kind of beat around in your, in your dryer so you don't have to use the fabric softening sheets. Um, and you can like put essential oils on them if you want your clothes to smell nice or whatever. But uh, these are kind of cool too. Um, so it's just another option for that. Um, and then uh, you can use bar soap instead of liquid soap and shampoo. You can use bar shampoo. Um, this comes in wrapped in paper and you know it's just as good as the liquid stuff. Um, there's so many options for this. I use um, some from a company called Lush that um, actually doesn't even come in paper. It just comes like a bar and then you get a little tin for it and you keep that in your shower and they do shampoo and conditioner. And I really like them. So that there's a lot of options for that instead of you know a pump of liquid soap that you're using. There's, um, this is kind of cool. This is, these are toothpaste tabs. They're like these little tabs in here. Um, and there's a company called Bite and these, it's a little glass jar. And when you need more, it just comes in a little cardboard box that you dump into your little glass jar and they have different flavors. And it's kind of like, when you're in school and like they taught to you about dental hygiene and you would have to like chew that red tablet and then they would like show all the plaque on your teeth, but it's not gross like that, but it's that kind of idea. You just start chewing one, it foams up with your with your water and you just, just like regular toothpaste. So even my kids like it, so it's very cool. So there's lots of, lots of other kinds of like green ideas to just cut down on disposable and plasticky things. So hopefully, you guys, I'm happy to hear from all of you after two about what kinds of things you're doing that I did not include in here. Um, oh, and you can always make your own stuff. If you have the time, go for it. Uh, I have not tried that. It's a lot easier for me to click a button and just get it sent to me, but totally cool. If you want to try making your own toothpaste and detergent and stuff, that's awesome. So a lot of, a lot of things that you can do, a lot of uh, you know, by thinking like, okay, well, what do I start with? Like, this is super overwhelming. Well, here's some options. One thing you can do is to conduct a trash audit where you like take a look at everything you've thrown out in a week or a month and you sort of do a tally. And then you can kind of see what is going to have the most impact. So this person's example here, 
like they use a lot of paper towels. Maybe they should think about switching either to bamboo or something more reusable or composting so that they're not throwing those paper towels in the trash. Like that would be something that would have a big impact in their house. Um, food scraps, lots of food scraps. Well, maybe we should think about starting to compost, you know. Um, jello cups, why are you buying individual jello cups? Just make a big tray of jello and then put it in your own containers, right? So all those kinds of things is just a way to kind of look at your what you're using specifically and then what what's gonna make the biggest impact right away. Um, then you can do a 31 day zero waste challenge. This woman going zero waste.com, she's got a book out and she's got a great site. And she just did a little like YouTube video for every day of like a different sort of piece of your life that you can attack in terms of trying to go zero waste. Um, you can calculate your ecological footprint. Uh, so it's pretty depressing. It kind of shows like how many earths worth of resources you are consuming, but um, it's sort of eye-opening and motivating. And then a um, hundred steps to a plastic free life, which uh, there's just like a lot of great tips on there. A lot of the things that I've shared today um, were from that. And um, so, yeah, so there's some more places just to kind of know where to get started. And then um, the moral of the story is we don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. So um, I am not one of those people that has all my garbage in a jar at the end of the year. And, you know, you just, you do what you can um, and to contribute. And it just sort of everything that you do raises consciousness among other people and also just makes you more conscious in your whole life of everything that you're doing and what you can do to make your, you know, your own things more green. Um, you know, you don't have to be like this little fox who's crying because she bought a banana but had a sticker. <laughs> like, okay, it's just, it's, you do what you can. You make the changes that you can. You start small and, you know, once that becomes routine, you know, you do, you can add more into that. Um, and then just final thoughts is that these are all things that we can do as individuals, but obviously there's so much that has to be done on a larger scale. So um, there's an article that I shared in my handout that uh, there was a cruise that Greenpeace put together with all these major chemical CEOs, like our major company CEOs, like Dow and Procter and Gamble and Coca-Cola. And they took them out into the middle of the ocean where there's like this horrible, huge patch of garbage that's floating in the ocean. They made them get in the water and snorkel in this stuff and see that like most of the stuff that was in there were products that are made by these companies, right? And so they basically sequestered them on this cruise and said, you guys need to sit down now and come up with some solutions of how you're gonna make this better and what changes are you gonna make? And they did. So more things like that have to happen, more things on a bigger scale, you know, holding companies accountable. The more that we reject these like packaged items and like this kind of stuff. And the more we call attention to businesses that are doing things that we don't like in terms of the waste they're creating, then the more change is gonna come. But, um, but these are at least some things that we can do in our own homes to start uh, making a change that way. So, so that's my um, presentation, but I love to hear from people like what, what you're doing or if any of these things are something that you wanna start doing in your home or what resources you have locally. Um, I just, you know, that's the part that I miss about doing these in person is the, the conversation that comes afterwards. So um, feel free to unmute, feel free to put something in the chat and, and we can talk. So let's see, does one pair of Levi's take 2000 gallons of water to make? I don't know. Uh, that is a good question. Uh, it might. Um, that's something you probably have to Google and look up. But again, you know, that's that's uh, that's one of those things where you you have to make a choice, right? If you you buy one really good pair of jeans um, that's going to last you a really long time, then that's probably better than buying the cheap, you know, whatever other brand jeans that are going to get a hole in them right away, and then you got to buy another one, right? Oh, it was a stat that a panel shared. Hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look into that. It's a good question. Um, if it is you know, maybe either, I mean, Levi's are good quality, right? So maybe it's worth it because it lasts a really long time. That's again, you know, or maybe you can just live without jeans. Nobody wears jeans anymore now, right? It's just sweatpants, so. So everybody knows I do have the option for you to unmute yourself if you do want to ask a question. And then if you're interested also, we're able to, if you do want to turn on the camera, that does help so that it's not essentially talking to nobody. That way Monica, can see your beautiful face and feel like she's talking to a human, right? And not a computer, sorry, it's my cat. Um, <laughs> I like what you said about the jeans because I'm wearing Lucky Brand jeans 
-hmm. I worked there for mm -hmm. almost four years and we were taught that our pair of jeans should last about three years, even with washing. They do, mm -hmm. you know, jean fanatics discourage washing of any means, yes. of any jeans. But we had a lucky brand at Costco. But what they said mm -hmm. was those were only made to last three months. Mm. So I only wear <laughs> the three-year lucky brands. I've already had this pair for about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. I have three pairs and I just alternate them. So yeah. Really does. And then we yeah. do have a question from Marielle. She wants to know, can wool balls substitute the use of liquid fabric softener? Um, yeah, they can. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I use. Um, it's the same, you know, uh, idea like, and, and I use both, right? So I use the little um, pods of fabric softener in my washing machine in the wash. And then I use the balls in the dryer to like beat up the clothes and soften them that way. So um, yeah, it replaces either the sheets or the liquid. Yeah, I do have those woolen balls too. And I, I really noticed a big difference too. It does cut down a little bit on drying time. Yeah, that's true. Um, using less detergent helps keep laundry softer on. That's good to know too. Um, and then somebody said <clears throat> that, Lucy says she makes her own bread but struggles on how to store it without using a plastic bread bag. Um, she's used beeswax wrap and it helps a little bit. Yeah, you know, what I've found, um, I think bread makers, you know, like there's a reason why they they give you bread like in paper bags and things like that. I think um, like when I have bought bread, like good, like homemade bread and I put it in a plastic bag, it gets soggy, right? Like the crust doesn't stay crusty. Um, so I think that there's probably better options. I would guess that like beeswax wrap would be better. Um, I'm gonna have to ask, uh, there's a woman who bakes bread out of her house in my neighborhood and I buy bread from her all the time and it doesn't really last long enough for me to need to like store it. Um, but, um, but I think sometimes they even say just like store it with like the cut side down and in like a bread box or whatever and that that's like the better way and you know, eventually you're just going to have to toast it because it gets hard but, um, but yeah, I'd have to look into that because I don't know, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a baker really, a bread baker myself, so. Yeah, and buying uncut would help it last longer too. I've worked a lot mm -hmm. of places. I also worked at Panera and <laughs> they are baked daily, preservative free. So they also would say like really in a couple of days, your bread would go stale, but they mm -hmm. suggested freezing it if you want it to last longer. So even Lucy, if you maybe like cut your bread in half, put mm -hmm. it in the freezer and have those little Ziploc bags that Monica showed the like mock mm -hmm. Ziploc. Mm -hmm. um, but I do use the bees wax. I have used them. I the Abigo brand I use. They have very large ones, and you just kind of twist the end or fold it over. So I'm not sure if yours isn't large enough, or maybe it's a little bit thinner. But I would give the bees wax wrap a shot, and maybe even put that in one of those large mock mm -hmm. Ziploc bags too, and see if that helps. Yeah, freezing totally is great. I mean, I I do that all the time just because you can't go through a loaf, you know that fast. So I make two loaves and I put one in the freezer mm -hmm. and I use the beeswax wrap for the one in the freezer and then put a plastic bag over that. Uh -huh. and yeah. I'm finding that my plastic bag bags keep getting holes in them and then I end up recycling them but it's still I just don't want to keep using those. Yeah so well, these the ones I showed these ones are um they're made of silicone and it's like way heavy duty stuff so okay. they're not gonna they're not gonna get holes in the rip but it's okay. always I try to reuse, like, I, you know, you do end up with the regular plastic Ziploc bags and I like, I reuse them to no end and I wash them and I'm like one of those mm -hmm. crazy people that has like a whole cabinet full of those, but Dang. eventually, yeah. Yeah, eventually you gotta toss them, so. Okay. That's a good question. And speaking of beeswax wraps, I just have to tell everybody, I was so impressed with mine. I cut an avocado in half, left the pit in the side I wasn't using, wrapped it, opened it the next day, not brown at all. I wow. actually like specifically reached out to that brand on Instagram and I was like, oh my <laughs> goodness, thank you for making these. And it's it's something I never would have thought about, right? These are just a magical wonder of a fluffy butt. I just love them. <laughs> yes, no, it's good stuff. So yeah, I think it's a very good option to getting rid of plastic wrap for sure. And I'm not sure if you mentioned, um, I know I've heard about this you probably know Bea Johnson. She's mm -hmm. zero, like zero waste. I know she mentioned shoe recycling. That's yeah. something mm -hmm. I've done. And I don't know if there's 
any in this area, but do you, I don't know if you have that on the resource list. I didn't get a chance. I don't, but um, I know like our local uh, recycling authority like has a program. And then I, um, you know, as a runner, like I do a lot of races and they, they will have, they'll collect them at shoe store, running shoe stores or at races and things like that to reuse. Even DSW, I think has bins in the front of their store. So um, it's just a matter of looking at it. So um, oh, look, this person wrote a very nice thing. Okay, so they, this person does a lot of the things, but they've got new ideas, especially taking your own container to the restaurant. Never would have thought to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, no, thanks, Vicki. I'm, I'm glad that you're already doing a lot of things. I know sometimes I come to these and I'm worried that everybody's going to be an expert and be like, oh, this person didn't know anything that I didn't already know, you know, but I'm always happy that at least somebody can like get one new idea or maybe they like fell off the green wagon and it's like inspires them to get back on, you know, that kind of thing. So, so thanks. I'm glad that you found some other ideas. So. And one thing that I really love is which I have trouble with is the refuse option. Mm -hmm. And even like the other day, I got a drink at Starbucks. Like you said, they, they won't let you bring your own cups yet. Mm -hmm. And it looks pretty, but it's unmixed. And I was like, I needed to get a straw. I know they have the nice sip tops. I'm like, right. I, otherwise we'd just be drinking syrup and maybe some right. at the bottom. So that yeah. also just frustrates me that places like, maybe I could like mix it for me next time. I'll, I'll try to do that ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, now I'm throwing away well rinse I recycle the cup but sometimes mm -hmm. you can't recycle the lid throw away yeah. the straw and it's just more stuff and if it's a hot drink you can't recycle the cup and because the cups have like a, a coating on them and so they're not recyclable or compostable or anything and so yeah that's but you know I think it, it ends up being a win-win because either like you just don't go to Starbucks because you're trying to be greener right and then you save that money too so you know it's um there's there's a way around it but yeah it's hard you know it's a hard thing uh when at our library we got uh, wooden stirs so you can and we compost at the library with collective resource so we just toss the wooden stirs into the compost and we got compostable disposable coffee cups um, instead of like the other kind so um even though i mean i try to just have people use their own mugs instead of using the disposable but if they do these are compostable so so i love to see just before we head out. Um, mm -hmm. What is everybody's favorite zero waste product that they use? You can chat it, you can mention it. I'm in love with my reusable water bottle. It is plastic. I tried a metal one, but I am a clumsy person and it was wide mouth. I was mm. getting it all over myself. <laughs> and then the, you know, the little gasket kind of loosened, but I've had this Contigo bottle for three or four years, the same one. Um, mm -hmm. I did have a problem where it, it was squeak like making a whistling sound when I was sipping from it I washed it in the dishwasher they have like unlimited warranty so I contacted mm -hmm. them they actually sent me like a new top mm -hmm. but I felt so bad throwing the other one around I gave it to my husband and I can mm -hmm. so this is my favorite one does anybody else have a favorite yeah, that's that's a great point, and that's a com that's an example of these companies that stand behind their products, and they, you know, like you can keep the thing forever because like they will replace parts and that kind of thing. I use a hydro flask, which is metal, um, and I've like dropped that thing so many times. It's like all dented now. I mean, it's you know, but it still does the trick. But yes, it is wide mouth spilling happens. So, mm -hmm. um, someone says they use Hundred Senses body hair bar and Blue Land hand soap. Very cool. I haven't have tried those ones yet. Um, drink from glass jars. Yep, that's great. Glass jars are great. And they're so hip right now too. You know, you can reuse them to make your overnight oats and all those things. Yeah, Yeti, that's another good brand too. And again, those things, they stand behind their stuff, you know, so um, you can always, you know, contact them when there's an issue and, and that thing will, will last you a really long time. So I like reusing my um, jam jars that you get at the store. They're those cute little ones with the, they kind of look like French little glasses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'll make like salad dressings in it or mm -hmm. um, use them as just like a water glass thing instead mm -hmm. of purchasing new glass jars. And so. Yep, that's a very good idea. Yeah, those jars come in super handy um, mm -hmm. for all kinds of things. I've like got a whole cabinet full of them too, so. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> They're good for our science experiments. My daughter decided she wanted to grow crystals. And I was like, here, have a bunch of jars or like make slime, you know? And she was like getting all my Tupperware out. I'm like, no, no, like use this stuff. This is what it's for, so. 
Well, great. Well, thank you everybody for coming. My contact information is on the resource sheet if people come up with questions later. Um, all the like links and stuff are on there, but um, I'm always around if people have more questions. So I really appreciate you spending your evening with me. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And in the email I sent to everybody, I mentioned that you can simply just reply back to it. If you have any additional questions for Monica, I'll reach out to her. I'm sure she'll be more than happy. And then also we're putting this recording on our YouTube. So feel free to check that out probably Tuesday since Monday's Memorial Day. And we should have a recording up there soon. Thank you so much. And Lucy, thank you for turning on the camera and participating. It was nice to have another. You're welcome. <laughs> I know it's yeah. rough, but I love that we can have Monica come from Skokie and be in her house and we can all be here together. Yeah. Yeah, Paul, thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Right. Okay, have, have a good, good night. night, everybody. Take care. Good night. Bye.